Thursday sit rep. I'm Wiz, primary weekly options model portfolio manager here at TGO. Latest economic data in today, the Philly Fed uh, falling out of bed. The conference board's leading index, weak, and unemployment claims a little higher, weekly unemployment claims a little higher than expected. Bottom line, guys, um, the economy sucks, period. There just isn't um, any good news out there. Didn't see good news this week on housing. Uh, we saw horrible unemployment numbers a couple weeks ago. We saw bad retail sales, uh, University of Michigan consumer sentiment. There is nothing good going on out here. Uh, the economic peak really is in retail sales, like I talked about, industrial production, CPI, uh, copper, gold. Everything's imploding. But yet, let's take a look at the uh, the market. You can't fight $85 billion a month that the Fed is dumping into this market and make pretend money, okay? That's a, you just can't do it. However, and up until this point, for the past three, four, five months, the economy and the markets have been completely disconnected. Bad news for the economy is actually great news for the market. Why? Because that means this party continues. This means that the Fed continues to pump air, liquidity, into this market, Something something is going on, however, okay? I think we've run out of steam. I think we're starting to get to the point where the drunks in the market who've been drinking all of uh, Ben Bernanke's liquidity are starting to look around going, now what? Who's going to drive us home and my head's starting to hurt? Now, the Fed chief is on a kamikaze mission. He can't do anything else. He can do some things. He, he can lower the uh, interest that he, he pays banks, large banks of sell reserves. He can actually charge them uh, and force them to lend the small businesses. And But he's not going to do that. That's, that's literally his Barney Fife uh, last bullet. However, um, is the market starting to wake up that bad news is, in fact, bad news? Bad news in the economy is bad news in the market. We're starting to see it. I... I'm not completely convinced because, again, you can't fight the Fed. You can't fight the money he's pumping into this market. Usually on these type of dips, they've been buying opportunities, right? Whether it was the sequester lie from the president and the president called gun owners or whoever liars last night. I'll call him a liar. Uh, he and Napolitano running around saying airliners are going to crash because, uh, God forbid, we cut $85 billion, uh, from our budget. Mr. President, the Fed chief is pumping in $85 billion a month, and you can't stomach $85 billion over 10 years? What a joke. Cyprus, North Korea, nothing was bringing this market down. What's bringing this market down right now? Now we're off our lows of the day, but this week has been a very, very interesting week. We've had triple-digit ups, we've had triple-digit downs, and I really believe that the market, everybody, you know, the, it, it, use all your Wall Street memes that you want, but um, this is really the most hated rally uh, that I've ever been a part of. been trading for 20 years, and it's the most hated rally. I think people are getting ready to take some profits. However, comma, I don't think this is a big one, Elizabeth. Right, Fred Sanford? I don't think this is the big one. I have been telling my Top Gun Options traders that I thought the big one would be based on earnings. Earnings haven't been that bad. Why? Mainly because a lot of companies ran out to the microphone over the past couple of weeks and said, it's going to suck, we're going to be horrible. And then they come out less horrible, and the market goes, oh, okay, that's good news. Right? So you can't hit the ball over the net, lower the net. That's what a lot of companies have been doing. But folks, i got to tell you, the underlying uh, pillars of this economy are rotten. If the Fed were not involved in this market, if the government was not involved in manipulating what is going on in our country and getting involved in capitalism, the the Dow would be at 7,000 and the S&P would be at about 650 or 700. It's not. So while we might see a pause here and the market pull back a little bit, I don't think we're going to get that massive correction. This isn't and, – and, you know – let me wrap up by saying this, guys. In the past three years, we've seen what? See, it's called seasonality, right? Sell in May and go away. There's May, there's May, and there's May. Anybody see a trend? Right around this time, 
for the past three years, the market, uh, the heavies tell the junior traders on the desk not to screw up, and they all go out to the Hamptons, lube themselves up, and uh, try and prove how richer they are than the person standing next to them. That's probably going to happen again this year, so the market might pull back. However, folks, as opposed to these last three years, we had QE1, QE2, uh, TARP, whatever, you know, Operation Twist, all these ridiculous operations. The difference between these three years and this year is the fact that the Fed's money gun is on, it's like a snowblower right now. It's on nonstop. So there is no end to this, right? So as opposed to the, all these previous programs, the market knows that the Fed's not going to stop. They've already said they're not going to stop until unemployment reaches about 6.5%, which ain't going to happen. Any, it might happen really soon, but that's because millions of Americans left the workforce living in their parents' basement eating Cheetos. That's the America that we're heading to. So interesting times we're in right now, guys. Very, very uh, tough market to trade. Trying to figure out if the market has indeed said, you know what, finally bad news is bad news. I don't think that's moment. that moment has come yet because you can't fight the, the literally the water cannon of Ben Bernanke's liquidity coming into this market. If there is a, mar a pullback of 5 10%, I'm going to put my buy hat on like you read about in Get Long Magazine. Until the Fed really stands on top of the bar and says, last call, this party is going to continue. Period. It has to. It mathematically can't. And even over in Japan, we, we put a bullish long-term trade on Japan uh, in, our model, in one of our model portfolios because now they're doing the same thing. They took a page from our playbook and said, oh, hell, if they printed their uh, stock market up into historic highs, we're going to do the same thing. And then we, have, our Treasury Secretary has the gall to yell at them about devaluing their currency while we're doing the same thing, the arrogancy of the United States. Um, so, folks, uh, interesting week. Uh, I'll be back with tomorrow's Friday market wrap-up because I want to see how the rest of the day goes. It's just it's, it's a very, very interesting market. Again, uh, you know, Dennis Gartman trading gold for 40 years. He's never seen anything like it, at least in the gold markets. I've never seen anything like this in the equity markets. This is the problem when the government gets involved in capitalism, right? When you start, when, when they start putting their puppet strings in, declaring winners, declaring losers, pumping money in, doing all sorts of stuff, it doesn't work. The market can't be like uh, we're, we're raising our kids today, which is horribly, in my opinion, where everybody gets a trophy. The losing soccer team on Saturday gets a trophy. Not when I was growing up, but that's the, that's the country we live in right now until we run into the harsh reality that not everybody gets a trophy. All right, I got to run. Got to trade today. I'll be back with Friday's market wrap-up. We'll see you.